All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopefully look. And uh, today's lesson, um, I was, uh, you know, searching through my Bible apps, you know, for, uh, you know, the daily verses that they tend to give uh, daily. And uh, one of the scriptures that came up was uh, Hebrews 12 and 11. But a great starting point is uh, verse 6, you know, pretty much going to, you know, the chastening of the Lord, you know, how we go through certain things, you know, so the Lord uh, can uh, uh, build us up. Things of that nature, because you know the scriptures tell us when thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right, because ultimately when you come to serve the Lord, you're going to go through manifold of trials, tests, and tribulations that the Lord has set up for each and every one of us individuals, and right, that we may overcome and Lord will in the end receive the blessing and the gift of salvation. All right, but I want to start in the book of Hebrews, chapter twelve and verse six. It says, "For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth, and correcteth." And scourges every son whom he receives. So ultimately, if you're going through something, that's Yahweh Bashim Yashai showing his love for you. Because ultimately, the Lord puts us through these things in order to keep us on edge, all right, and, and in order to keep us from going off. All right, because ultimately, and that's also why the scriptures say, spare not the rod, because with the Lord constantly correct us and correcting us, all right, it's, pre it's preventing us from a, a committed sin. All right, because when a father truly loves his son, he's going to uh, do things or correct the son, you know, chastise the son to keep him from uh, going into the passage of destruction. All right. I mean, today's day and age. All right. Because that's why a lot of uh, uh, children need a father in the household all right, to keep them out the streets, to keep to keep them out, you know, gangs, pretty much to keep them from turning to a complete demon. All right. Same thing with us in the truth. The Lord is chastening, chastening us and correcting us. To keep us away from the path of destruction. All right. It says, uh, verse 7 If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as sons. For, wh for what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So ultimately, if nothing's happening to you and the Lord and the Lord is not correcting you, all right, then ultimately, He's not dealing with you. All right. So ultimately, man, it's <clears throat> like you know, if, if if you're not going through anything, you know, the best thing to do would be to pray to Yahweh Bashim Yashai. You know, hey Lord, you know, correct me, chastise me, you know, keep me on edge, keep me on point, all right, so that I don't end up falling off that straight path. All right. Um verse nine. It says, Furthermore, we have had five we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence, right, man? You know, our literal fathers. I know when we were growing up. Our literal father said, hey, son, don't do this, don't do that. All right, what would happen if you did what your father told you not to do? And you get that spanking, all right? Just like if we were to go off, if we were to, you know, commit sin or transgression or iniquity, the Lord would spank us, all right? And the Lord's chastening comes in many different forms, all right? You can stub your toe, as small as, small as that, you can stub your toe, all right, bite your tongue, bite your gum, all right? The Lord could give you a headache, a stomach ache. All right, and then you got to look at those things and think back, reflect on what you did. And even if you don't know what you did, just be like, hey, Slaki Yahweh Bashim Yashai, please forgive me. All right, because ultimately we're supposed to, you know, beg Yahweh Bashim Yashai for mercy and repentance daily. All right, but <clears throat> once again, the chastisement of the Lord comes in many forms. All right, it says, um, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? And ultimately, the Father of spirits, all right, is another title. For the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh, all right? And we know his only begotten son's name to be Yahweh Shai, all right? Verse 10 says, For they verily for a few days chasten us out of their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. All right, man, because ultimately the Lord is, you know, chastening and correcting us for our benefit, all right? Building us up because we're coming into some really, really a terrible evil days where pretty much our endurance and patience has to be on a level, all right? So ultimately, when the Lord puts us you know, through certain things, and when he chastises us and, 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 and uh, corrects us, all right, it's building up our patience and endurance. So ultimately, <clears throat> this is the proven grounds, all right? The Lord is building us up for something for something bigger, all right? And ultimately, Lord will, the Lord keeps the spirit on us to, you know, endure these things that are set before our faces, these manifold trials, tests, and tribulations. If we, if we endure those things, all right, the Lord is going to bless 
bless us with the uh, blessing and to get the salvation, Lord is Lord will be of the elect. All right. Verse um. Here's what the here's what the Bible app gave me in ver verse eleven. Verse eleven. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous because ultimately in the flesh when you go into certain things it doesn't feel good. All right. You know ultimately the flesh wants you to act up, but that's the spiritual side you got to kick in. Like hey, you know even though it doesn't feel good in the flesh, you know Yahweh watching me outside is doing this to me for a reason. He's trying to build me up. The Lord sees me as a son. All right. So I need to I need to remember that. All right, keep pushing forth and keep my trust in Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. All right, because ultimately, what does the scripture tell us? We can go to the book of James, chapter 1, and get into verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now, in this scripture, it's telling you to count it all joy because it's reassuring you that the Lord is dealing with you as a son. All right, in verse 3, it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And ultimately, all the things we go through. All right, it's, it's a trial of our faith. All right, then when you go into that word patience, it translates to suffering because, you know, ultimately we suffer in this truth. All right, whether it be, you know, mental affliction, you know, the physical. All right, because really, man, hey, them demons, they try to, they try to, you know, attack you from every single avenue, you know, like the mental affliction. Satan, you know, not to drag this on, but Satan, you know, could throw some of the most wicked, evil, and gruesome thoughts in your heart. All right, and ultimately Satan tries to make you act upon that. All right, that's 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 the uh, battle between the spirit and the flesh, and ultimately you can't give in to that temptation. All right, verse four it says, "But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, meaning lacking nothing." So ultimately, these trials, tests, and tribulations are set up by Yahweh Bashim Yashai to purge out all these different uh, bad qualities that He sees within you. That's why it says, uh, let patience have a perfect work that may be perfect, entire, and entire, wanting nothing, meaning the Lord is putting you through these things so you can be the perfect man of the Lord that he wants you to be, all right? So back to Hebrews 12 and 11. Um, it says, that, now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So ultimately, you know, as we go through these things, it sharpens us. All right, it builds us up, makes us harder. All right, so ultimately, um, when we go through certain things, when we go through more things, all right, we know how to conquer those things through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Because once, once you uh, get through one thing, all right, the Lord advances you to the next level. All right? Uh, let's see here. You know, once again, Lord will, you know, the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yashai, keeps the spirit on us to endure the uh, various things we go through. We may be able to enter into that rest or the kingdom of heaven. All right. This is going to be the book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 17. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Right, man, this is considered a light affliction, especially compared to what our Lord, Yahweh, Yashai, went through. All right. Now, I speak as a man, I, I know for a fact, you know, what our Lord Yahweh Shai went through, I couldn't do it. I know sure as hell I couldn't do it, all right? But our affliction compared to our Lord's is light, man. It says, uh, which is but for a moment, because ultimately, you know, th this is really just for a moment, all right? You know, especially in the Lord's eyes, because ultimately, once again, you know, our, um, our time frame is different to Yahweh by Shemiah Shai's. But nonetheless, this is really just for a moment, all right? Working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So ultimately, the things we're going through all right, are working towards a better purpose, all right? To build us up, to make us harder, and then, Lord, as well, we uh, continue to endure these things, endure these chastings and corrections, all right, we enter into the kingdom of heaven, all right? Verse 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, and what are the things that are seen? Let's read that again. Uh, verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, meaning the temporal, material things of this life, you know, we're, not, we're not going after the fastest cars, you know, the most clothes, you know, the most hoes, things of that nature. All right, but at the things which are not seen, which is going to the kingdom of heaven, because no one has truly, <clears throat> it's like it, nobody has really seen the kingdom of heaven yet. All right, what, is the, what does the book of First Corinthians 2 say? 
his eye hath not seen nor ear heard what the Lord hath uh, prepared for them that love him. I also mean, who are those that love the Lord? His elect. All right, so also mean, no one has seen, you know, the 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 the, the blessings, all right, the goodness, and also mean, the kingdom, you know, our rest that Yahweh Bashim Yahshua has prepared for us. All right. It says for the things which are seen are temporal, meaning you know, these material things such as the the, the fastest cars, nice homes, nice clothes, all these things. Uh, they're not going to abide forever. At some point, they're going to pass away, all right? But the things which are not seen are eternal, meaning the kingdom of heaven. All right, what comes with the kingdom of heaven? Immortality, all right? Everlasting righteousness, all right? Those are the things we seek. All right, we, we want to live, we want to be able to live forever and to please Yahweh, Bashim, Yashai, and 100% righteousness, all right? Because ultimately, that, that's the end goal, man. All right, that's the end goal. To, to, to endure these things, to endure these various trials, tests, and tribulations, all right, achieve that immortality, or have that righteousness, righteousness uh, installed in our inner parts to be able to please Yahweh Bashim Yashai 100%. All right? This is, um, this is going to be the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 3, and uh, verse 11. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, right, man? Because ultimately, well, you're not supposed to despise the chastening of the Lord because the Lord, once again, right, is building you up for something better. All right, it says, not to be weary of his correction. Meaning, you know, when the Lord is correcting you, chastening you, you know, putting you to certain things, all right, don't grow weak. All right, don't grow weary, weary of his correction. Don't go, don't give up. All right, that's why scripture tells us to cleave unto him and depart not away because ultimately, once again, the Lord puts us through these things so that we can exercise our faith in him. All right. So ultimately, once again, it says uh, neither be wary of his correction, meaning keep pushing forth. All right. Keep moving forward. Keep the trust in Yahweh by Shemi All right. Verse 12. It says, for, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. All right. Going back to the Hebrews 12, because once again, the Lord putting you through these various Trials, tests, and tribulations, all right, is showing you, he's reminding you that he's dealing with you as a son, all right? This is uh, the book of Job, chapter 5, at verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom, the, whom Yahweh correcteth. And why is that? Because once again, that man is reassured that the Most High is dealing with him as a son and not a bastard. It says, therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty, because once again, the Lord is doing this for a greater purpose to build you up. All right. This is uh, going to be the book of First uh, Corinthians, chapter eleven, and uh, verse thirty-two. It says, "But when we are judged, we are a chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world." Also, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai judges us differently right, than he does the rest of the world. All right, the Lord tends to show our more mercy upon us because we're actually trying, all right, to the best of our ability to follow after his righteousness, trying to please the Lord, all right, whereas the rest of the world, when they fuck up or when they screw up, all right, they don't even repent, all right, they don't even acknowledge the Lord, all right? So ultimately, you know, things we, the things we can be put to death for, all right, the Lord spares us and has mercy on us, but he still uh, 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 corrects us and puts a judgment on us, whereas the rest of the world, if they do something, man, the Lord could take them out right then and there. All right, but ultimately, you know, the Lord is always, you know, setting a, a distinction, all right, between his chosen and between the world, all right? This is uh, going to be the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, uh, beginning at verse 1. It says, uh, but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. And the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And a departure is taken from misery. And ultimately, you know, the Lord, you know, is always, you know, taking care of his elect. Right? Because ultimately, that's who the righteous in these times are. All right, the elect. All right, now, when it says, in the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And their departure is taken from misery. But ultimately, you know, the things we go through, are we, because we have the wisdom, we're not counting the unwise. So the things we go through, we know, yeah, how about me outside? All right, is building us up. All right, it says, in the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and the departure is taken from misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. Because ultimately, you know, like the scriptures tell us, you know, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. All right, verse, um, 
and verse 4. It says, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet their hope is full of immortality. All right. You know, Romans 8, you know, also goes into you know, how we're killed uh, all the day long. Ultimately, that's going to the hell we catch. So, ultimately, you know, in the sight of the world, man, you know, they, they think we're perishing. All right. Because they don't truly have the understanding. But, you know, us with the understanding, we know why the Lord is putting us through certain things. All right. Let's read verse 4 again. It says, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet their hope is full of immortality. So, even though we're going through certain things, or even though we're feeling, you know, uh, um, anguish in the flesh or our end hope all right or our end goal is the is the blessing of immortality all right verse five and having been a little chastised they shall be greatly rewarded for yahweh approved them and found them worthy for himself right and it says for having been and having been a little chastised remember second corinthians uh call this a light affliction all right but ultimately this light affliction that we're going through right now is working towards a really huge reward, all right? That being the kingdom of heaven, immortality, all right? And the Lord just, you know, giving us blessings upon blessings upon blessings, all right? It says, um, for the most high proved them and found them worthy for himself, all right? The scriptures goes into, um, um, acceptable, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, roughly paraphrasing. Verse six, as gold in the furnace has he tried them, and receive them as a burnt offering because when we go out the scriptures, all right, uh, our afflictions or the things we go through is known as a fire, all right. Also, the Lord compares his men to choice gold. Now, what fire does to gold is you know purge out all those impurities, all right. It's like you now when the Lord puts us through certain things, those ti- those trials, tests, and tribulations, all right. What happens is He's you know building us up, and building up our patience, and building up our endurance, all right, and pushing out those unwanted qualities, all right, that He sees within us. That's why we go through all the things we go through. That's why the Lord is constantly correcting us, chastening us. So one, he can keep us on edge. Two, he can purge out all the BS that's inside of us. And ultimately, so we can be the perfect man of the Lord that he wants us to be. All right. So Lord's will, this lesson was edifying into the body. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double iron to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well and preach the truth, the truth of sincerity. Shalom to the hopefully elect. And Lord is well, I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, shalom.